everybody. Welcome back to Julie's Roots and Shoots. My name is Julie. Today we're going to talk about cookbooks. If you guys have been paying attention to a lot of the homesteading groups on YouTube or Instagram, this year has been a season of not necessarily prepping, but just preparing yourself to be able to do all of these life-giving things like baking bread from scratch or how to cook meals or how to butcher chickens or just the really basic simple things of homesteading. And if for some reason you can't access that on your phone or by any means of internet, the goal is to be able to have all of this actual fact-checked information in a physical copy. The one thing that I'm trying to stock up on book-wise is cookbooks and that's one you know it's a pretty easy thing you can do and I know I've gone into the Pinterest rabbit hole and just like taking screenshots on my phone or if I need to you know google something really easy I, I, I still have to google it so if there's ever a point where you know our wi-fi went out which it does all the time here we live kind of out in the boonies so we run into this problem a lot and it just really opened my eyes seeing all of these bigger influencers out there saying hey maybe we should be a little bit more prepared by having physical copies in our houses something that we can refer to you know at any time at any time without having to rely on the internet so what I wanted to do with you guys today is go through my little stack of cookbooks here and tell you where I got them and why I got them and yeah we just wanted to do a little chat outside in the nice weather so here we go. These are pretty much all the cookbooks I've had in my house. Some of them I've had for years. Some of them I just got in the mail, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're new. So I have been gifted some cookbooks by the people that really know me and know what I like. Uh, for instance, I got this one from a coworker years ago and she also, I might have, I think I've shown them on a couple videos before, but she, sewed me up some little hot mittens and they were just so cute and she also gave this book with me as well and this is a old book let's see here 1982 so this is a 1982 copy of this book which i kind of like uh not all these recipes are for me per se but there's definitely some inspiring uh recipes in here and as well as just good tips and things you should know in the kitchen Another really good option where I found used cookbooks, and I mean you can buy them new, is thrift books. Thrift books is an online, basically library where you can buy books. It's an online used bookseller is what thrift books is. I highly recommend it. I Most of the books on my bookshelf have come from thrift books, even like college textbooks. I've ordered a couple off there when they had them. Highly recommend them. They have a point system, so the more books you order off of them, which range anywhere between like $2 to, you know, as, as high as you want, depending on, you know, how new and exciting the new book is. But most books on there are about, I would say, 5 five to eight dollars for used books and you know once you buy it you buy it and the point system is grand i've gotten a bunch of free books already from thrift books i ordered a lot of these big ones and i'll just run through them real quick these books i bought for the titles i didn't really like do any type of in-depth research on them i was just like oh that sounds interesting i want to buy it and it was only you know three bucks i would I just highly recommend it because I am a thrifty person, I'm a frugal person, I like things on sale, and it's really hard for me to go buy brand new things when I know, hey, this is an option. So, thrift books, if you haven't, check it out. So the first book I got was, which I'm excited about, I haven't delved too deep into this because I've been sucked into one of the other books. I've glanced through here a couple times and I got Fanny Farmer 1896 Cookbook. And I am so excited about this because it's an 1896. That was just something that I thought was really cool and perhaps some of these recipes can get back to the basics. You know, some of the things that homesteaders are more likely to have in their pantries or able to collect from their community instead of having to go to the store all the time for, you know, a special type of spice or something like that, you know, just something 
kind of old school is what I was looking for. Classic recipes and hopefully they they taste good too. So I was pretty excited about this. It is a thick book. It's it's the thickest book I got. The second book I got was Joy of Gardening Cookbook. I just wanted something more garden centric when the garden's really producing a lot of produce and just some delicious easy meals you can whip up and I know there's tons of Pinterest things for this but I just wanted something physical to look at or you know when my when my eyes get tired of looking at a computer screen I wanted a book. Yeah, this is a 1984 cookbook. I mean, it looks like they have some real beautiful and classic uh, garden-centric recipes on here. So, pretty pretty happy to have this one too. I couldn't help it, I got this Southern Living Cookbook. The one thing I liked about this book was that it had a lot of real easy, simple recipes for things like vinaigrettes, mayonnaise, uh, various types of dressings and oils. And it just had this really concise, short, like, this is a recipe, this is a recipe, this is a recipe. It's just really like to the point and you don't have to read, you know, 20 pages before you get to the recipe. I love Southern style food and I wanna get more into cooking with things like rice, things like jambalaya and gumbo. I want to just be able to incorporate more more foods and varieties into our good old Idaho recipes, which are very potato centric. Another older book I got was Fish and Vegetable Cookbook. For those of you who don't know, I work in the fisheries field out in Idaho. My fiance and I, we do a decent amount of fishing and you know, we're just, we're in an area where we can easily get like trout and tilapia and catfish and um, all sorts of panfish like perch and crappie. Uh, we do a lot of like fish fries when we do go out and catch fish or we'll do things like smoked trout or we don't really do a whole lot of baking of trout. I, I, I just really like smoked or barbecued trout a lot better. Another thing I want to try to do is get into canning fish. I've I had a couple friends who would can their salmon and steelhead and that is something I really want to try whenever we get back up to the mountains. and. Uh, we're able to go salmon and steelhead fishing again, but this was again I kind of wanted more garden centric so Vegetables and fish those are just this is probably going to be the most practical book for me in the summertime When we have our hands on a lot of produce from the garden and when I have a lot of fish in my freezer So another one kind of again back to the basics I want these simple recipes that are you know, this is how you do this and then later when I want to embellish these recipes, once I know how to like do the basic cooking, then I'll embellish it with my own flair and style of um, you know, flavor, I guess. The last book, which is my favorite right now, is The World Encyclopedia of Bread and Bread Making. I have almost read through all of the picture captions in this book, every single page has pictures and it has captions describing what these pictures are and it's very thorough and well done and it goes through all the breads of the world and we're talking I mean back to when humans first started making bread and like cultivating wheat fields and stuff like that it touched on that and the brief history of it which is I, I find just so fascinating so they talk about all the different types of uh, breads of the world, types of flowers, types of tools. They go through each like country of origin and what their traditional bread or breads are. And it's I there are so many good recipes in here that I want to try. A lot of them are Russian. Um, there's one I think it's called like black bread, Russian black bread. It's made with molasses and it just sounds so odd but delicious. I don't know. I want to try it. I want to get into rye breads and everything like that. I I would so recommend this book if you're getting into your sourdough starting. And a lot of it is the traditional, you know, start with the sourdough starter. Some of them do have like the, the yeast you can buy at the store. Yeah, but they're definitely a lot more traditional and a little artisanal, but a lot of them are practical too. I am in love with this book. I've been reading it every night. Just looking at the pictures there's it's so well done this book is so well done and it's my absolute favorite <laughs> the last bit of 
recipe hunting that I've been doing is I've gone on to a few different uh, blogs and websites of the people that I follow online and I've just printed out their recipes that they've made as free printables for us. So I've got a pretty decent stack of papers here and it's just things like blackened chicken and some type of kale salad or you know mushrooms and caramelized onion galette. I don't know what that is, but it sounded really good because I like mushrooms and caramelized onions. Things like uh, chicken pot pie and all sorts of sourdough recipes. Things like tea mixes to get those perfect ratios. Yeah, like sourdough chocolate bread or sourdough pastries. You know, things where you would typically use a commercial yeast, but you can use your sourdough because that's how people did it back in the day when you couldn't go to the store and buy commercial yeast. Um, molasses cookies. I'm on a molasses kick, apparently. Simple things like how to make buttermilk biscuits and uh, biscuits in general, or you know, just yummy things too, like sweet and sour meatballs. Like that sounds pretty good to me, so I printed it off so I could make it. I got these three hole punched, and my plan is to get a really nice, big, like a two inch recipe binder. And I'm gonna continue to print off these recipes, get everything labeled and organized, and get that recipe book going. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for going through my cookbooks with me. And I really do hope you get to explore thrift books and the great deals that they offer. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just love buying thrifted items. And thrift books, it's in the title. It makes sense financially to me, so I hope you explore your your options as well especially if you're in a money pinch and you want to get some physical cookbooks like absolutely go check them out i they have some some good options in there please let me know down in the comments if you guys have a favorite recipe book cookbook or just anything that you would highly recommend everybody have in their kitchen as a staple thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today i really appreciate you watching my videos and being with me here on my channel and hopefully encouraging or inspiring you guys to get out there and just take one more little baby step towards your dreams. I'll see you guys on the next video real soon. Bye.